appearance. But yesterday, I think things were going quite smoothly. We were enjoying the culture, the tradition, the um, energy that uh, greeted the entourage of Napo until until he mounted the stage. And um, as you have witnessed online and offline, those comments have rubbed up Ghanaians the wrong way. Um, whether or not um, Honorable Andy Apia Kubi has been vindicated is yet to be seen as we now know that the campaign is getting hot, hot, hot. Now uh, you're going to have to see Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe collaborating with members of parliament and so on and so forth as he goes with them, as is the tradition, isn't it, Johnny? Um, crisscrossing the country with various candidates hoping to sell their message. That's when we'll really see um, if... Uh, that collaborative spirit that he says that Napo is lacking is really the case. But yesterday, from where I sit, um, there was a lot to slice and dice, a lot of takeaways from it. And unfortunately, uh, the biggest story now is that comment that uh, Napo made about Nkrumah. President Nkrumah. In President Nkrumah. It was, it was in bad taste, um, as been said. I mean, you, you can't belabor that point. Um, but it, it was certainly not in the best of uh, tastes, if you ask me. And for me, I think that he dropped the ball yesterday um, when the ball was passed to him. He, he, he could have done way, 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 way better than, than it. Maybe you cut him a, a, a slack because you say um, he, he might have been very excited uh, and carried away that, well, I've been waiting for this. Now it's here eventually. And, and I'm home. I'm before my people and before my party base and before royalty, um, what can I say to whip up the public sentiment and also to whip up the base and the grassroots of my party? I, I have to say something that will excite them. Uh, but in choosing what to say to excite, did he go overboard? I think so, he, that he went overboard. And if you give him uh, the tapes to look at again, I'm sure that he himself um, would, would agree to a very large extent, unless he's not, he doesn't want to be candid, but he would agree to a very large extent that uh, he went yeah. overboard with those comments. I mean, that Sam Unkruman, Unkruman, you know, it's uh, not not the best of, of ships. Not, 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 not. Well, there are those that say that he was addressing a very specific crowd mm. and that the first rule of comms is to know your audience and right. to cater to your audience. Mm. So in a certain setting mm -hmm. or in a particular arena certain utterances uh shall i say par for the course i don't know whether we can put this in the realm of well um we're in we're in campaign season mm -hmm. and we see the kind of fervor and vigor that mm -hmm. politicians mount the stage with i mean what have we not had in the pursuit of power mm. What have we not heard in the pursuit of power? I don't want to rehash this and rehash this. He's now the vice presidential mm -hmm. candidate mm -hmm. of the NPP. Right. And at some point, we also have to get on to what kind of ideas and other qualities he brings to the table. Right. A lot has been said about his personality. Mm -hmm. The NPP mm -hmm. clearly don't have any qualms with that. Um, we, of no, course, they can. They actually do have qualms with mm. it. I mean, if you listen to um, you know, people who have been trying to turn the tables, they tell you that he is not arrogant, as you say. Um, he is assertive and he is confident. And don't confuse his confidence and assertiveness to uh, mean that he is arrogant. Mm. Th th that's the tone you get from yeah. people. There are some who shy away from making any commentary at mm. all about it because they think that, well, it's... Well, if they've chosen nothing. him, Johnny, certainly they can't have qualms well, about that. Uh, Dr. Asasanti of the University of Ghana, for example, said that the character of Napo who actually mean nothing. The, what people will be looking at will be the bread and butter issues. Yesterday, if you listen to Dr. Baumia, he mentioned that the NPP has done way, 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 way better than uh, John Dramani Mahamas, you know. So it's, it looks like he is not going beyond John Mahama. He's not going into the third, second, the first republic like Napu did. He is staying within the confines of the fourth uh. republic. And even that, he's just looking at his predecessor uh. and what he did and why he should not come back. You had Kennedy in Japan. He said the same thing. The alternative yeah. will not help. You had Nanado. So it looks like the messaging is targeted at the NDC and John Dramani Mahama. Right. Um, it was only Napu who veered off and went all the way because he wanted to, as I insist, massage the ego of President Gufuado. Uh. And for me, I think that's the unfortunate thing that they've been doing to the president all this while. He gets things wrong, and then his ego is massaged, and he thinks that he's done something right. Uh. You know, 
when your leader gets it wrong, you must be able to tell the leader straight in the face that, boss, you are wrong. Right. And this is where I miss the likes of uh, Dr. Makutufo, um, who under President Kufo brought the brilliant idea of the school feeding program and saw it into fruition. I miss uh, the, the late Victor Newman, director of research one time at the presidency under President Kufado. He was in the trenches with him in 1995 on the Kumi demonstration. I mean, those people can look the president in the face. Uh, the Nyahota Maklus of this world, the Dr. Arthur Kennedys of this world, they can look him in the face and tell him, boss, you're getting it wrong. Mm. I mean, if the late J.H. Benson were to be alive, uh, the late Victor Wusu, I'm not sure they would, they would be afraid to tell President Kufa that what you're doing is wrong. Mm. You know, I, I don't think that they would be alive and watch for a president to have uh, a whole chair in the V8 moving around when we're going around begging for aid. I'm not sure that that would happen. And, and they, but you find a lot of young people, Napo is relatively not young, not too old. He's, he's midlife, yeah. right? Getting on to 60. Mm. And... Um, this is an opportunity that anybody will clamor for. That's right. Right? The, his contemporaries, the Lord Commies, and all the other. These are opportunities that they will clamor for. Um, young Nana B, who's boiling with a lot of energy, national organizer, you know, they all want to do something and say something so that those who within the party say that, well, the party has been destroyed, the tradition has been messed up, you know, the identity of the party itself has been lost and etc. Would, would not have anything to say. So they would do and say anything to protect the image of President Kufado. Because really, power has shifted. And between now and when the elections will happen, the focus will be on Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and Dr. Matthew Poko Prempe. It will not be on President Kufado. If at all, the focus will be on President Akufado will be because he is coming to endorse the campaign that these two will wage, but not to herald him as they did in 2008, 2012, 2016. They, they, that's, his days are, are, are gone uh, uh. and over. So now, in an attempt to want to eulogize him and to want to create an epitome of, you know, whatever it is that they have in their minds, they end up saying things that they are not supposed to say. Uh, How do you begin to even think and say, utter it, that since in Krum Especially at a time no, like this where we are going through do such dire times, where that. we have uh, over 7.4 or so million Ghanaians living in multidimensional poverty. Mm. I don't, I, I don't, I don't really know how you juxtapose what we're going through. How you juxtapose our currency exchange with what he's saying. How you juxtapose the the state of our healthcare. Mm. How you juxtapose the state of our roads. How you juxtapose the environment, the mm. state of our water bodies. When you think about the plethora of issues yeah, that we are yeah. contending mm. with, you put that against what he's saying. It just doesn't, it, add, it doesn't up. add up. It doesn't match up. Listen to Dr. Matthew Pukupepe. Listen to him. <laughs> Presidential campaign. A 
2024 it is about the future and yeah what choice was a election in Say they are because election is a choice between former president John Mahama and the current flag bearer and vice president Dr. Baumi. That is the choice a choice between the future and the past. The past president, well, on the way the president hey, and he failed. Me, me a vice president, me the president, but Obiegi to me say, me, I am the most effective vice president in the history of Ghana. Vice President of Moba Ghana have from independence. Unya Vice President of Juma Asin Dr. Mahamudu Bahumia. Oil oiled machine for the 2024 presidential campaign. A bar year 2024. It is about the future. And yeah, what choice was a election in? Say the Pesaya Kwe ni manase, ye pesaya saichi. Ye kwe ni manase ye kwechi. Because election is a choice between former president John Mahama and current flag bearer and vice president, Dr. Baumi. That is the choice. A choice between the future and the past. The past president, well, on the way the president hey, and he failed. Me, me a vice president, me the president, but Obiegi to me say, me, I am the most effective vice president in the history of Ghana. The best in the morning is on 92.7, sunrise on 3FM. And this is your election command center live here on 3FM 92.7. 31 minutes after 8 on sunrise on 3FM. My name is Johnny Hughes. We'll go back to the Ashanti region where we picked off uh, yesterday. And talk to our Northern Bureau Chief, William Evans Income. He was there on the grounds in Living Color. Bill, good morning. Thank you for your time. Good morning, Johnny, and thanks for having me for a bite. Yesterday was quite colorful. Um, it's got the people and the tongues in the Ashanti region uh, wagging and talking about the brand new vice presidential candidate of the NPP, Dr. Matthew Pukuprempe, an indigen. But beyond that, what reactions are there? Maybe uh, it Napu will need time to be able to really uh, adjust to the advice that uh, the king uh, uh, gave him. One of his statements has to do with the word your, um, when he was uh, making a comparison between uh, the current administration and that of the uh, former and late Ghana's first president, Dr. Uh, Kwame Nkrumah, when he said your president. It's something that has actually dominated the airways uh, this morning. A uh, lot of, I mean, comments uh, flying all over special and social media and what a view. So um, people are beginning to 
really uh, analyze that particular statement and then also uh, likening it to um, what people perceive him, perceive him to be, um, that arrogant task, and whether indeed Dr. Matipoku Pempe will uh, listen or, or kind of work with the king's advice. Johnny. Great. Uh, Eric Mawenag Beta is also joining us on the other line. Uh, Eric, good morning. Thank you for your time. Good morning, uh, Johnny. I know that yesterday you were immersed in culture and also the politics of the Ashanti region. Uh, have you defrosted from that ice yet? Oh, very much uh, defrosted. Uh, we've gotten used to uh, the politicking around these parts and the conversations that for many of the people continues to dominate. It's the NPP that's dominant here. doesn't look like it will change anytime soon, even though the NDC continues to attempt to make inroads. Um, this is the heart of the, uh, the governing new patriotic party, and you don't need anybody to, to tell you that at all. Mm. The Ashanti region is quite dynamic in the elections of this country. The MPP is confident that if they get a certain percentage of the votes in the Ashanti region, it's a done deal for them. But is it that easy on the ground from what you see, Eric? Um, the, the conversations are varied. For some, there's no other option than the elephant
uh, sow seeds of discord, if we can call it that, because a conversation in such a manner will begin to suggest that all is not well. It is in the in, in the interest of the of the party, if anything is to go by yesterday, to show a united front as much as possible, a front that will communicate to its base and the grassroots and the Ashanti region that look. We are solid at the top, be solid uh, at the grassroots level as well and go door to door and campaign. But like Evans has alluded to, to the fact that um, he spoke to Dr. UEC and the conversation surrounding a lot more work that needs to be done. These are conversations that will stare them in the face when they walk away from, from that rally ground and they begin to hit the ground running and they will need the support of everybody else. They will have to confront some of these demons and be able to come to terms with the fact that they need the buy-in of everybody if they have to go into this election and win. And persons like Andy Apia Kubi, Dr. Jose Duchum, and other individuals perhaps who, um, who feel aggrieved as a result of one thing or the other, they have to find a way to bring them all on board. Kennedy or Hilia Japan has come on board and is uh, hammering on this particular point strongly that we put aside every difference because it's better to be in power than to be in opposition. And we will see in the coming days how they are able to work this out and whether or not these individuals who didn't so much agree to how it's gone, how they are handled, how they also come in to support, and then we can see the way forward. Now, the talk of Honorable Kennedy, Japan Bill, I'll ask you this question. He yesterday apologized to President Akufuado and by extension Dr. Baumia for that uh, memo showdown comments that he made um, during the presidential uh, primaries of his party. How did the president react to that? I mean, in terms of his facial expression, did he show any sign of acceptance, etc.? Hello, Bill. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, well, I, 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 I thought that, that, that question was meant um, for Mawena. No, it's for you. Well, so, well, I mean, if you really understand the Atlan tradition and how the Ashantis uh, actually, I mean, capitalize on a particular uh, environment to at least, I mean, make amends and all of that. One, I think it was a moment that Kennedy of Nea Japan um, stole that this is the right time for me to do that. And even in the midst of people, these people will also serve as witnesses, whether you are going to accept that formal apology or otherwise. I think it was an apology that was well received, mm. one by the president and then again by the former president. But again, some also believe that, I mean, it was a political game, one of those things, so we don't take such statements to heart. But there are other people who also believe that such statement can also be very injurious, especially when it has to do with intra-party politics. But hey, whether it will be injurious or it will not be injurious, I think five months to the elections, of course, the NPC the is making cap political capital out of that. And that is not the only statement that Canada or Canada Japan made. In fact, it is one statement that openly he apologized. What many believe, as far as the MPP uh, people, I mean, uh, uh, have been uh, uh, talking about, to be very, very injurious, has to do with that particular statement he made that was um, people are feeling as if there is no tomorrow. So it is one particular statement that more or less has become a nightmare to some of the MPP gurus. And if Ohene Ejakon probably will also get another opportunity and maybe either uh, substantiate that particular claim or maybe apologize like he did yesterday. I see. Yeah, yeah. Marwen, now, now, now step, step, in, step in the, into this conversation for me as we wrap up. Um, now, going into the 2024 elections, all the things that were said, you know, at the presidential primaries, you now see all those individuals coming round the table to say, let's unite, let's support Dr. Balmia, let's support Napo to win the election and all of that. Uh, do you get a sense that Ghanaians would take these individuals serious because they had said very scathing things about their own party and about the candidates. Now they're coming back to say, throw them away as if we never said them. And then let's unite and elect them both. How is the Ashanti well, region reacting to this? 
Well, for for the base of the of the NPP, which is the Ashanti region, they will not look at this a lot. Uh, they they will not take into consideration comments made in the past. They will look only forward and look to the fact that hey, can it be Japan who said this and that is back and is supporting Baumia? That is a big deal. Um, if anybody can take advantage of some of the commentary from the past, it will have to be the opposition party ringing loud some of these utterances from uh, just when they were competing to become the party's flag bearer and, and drum it down the ears of the people in the region. That's the only way, because the party communicators in the, in the NPP are not going to do that for them. They are going to highlight the fact that, look, Kennedy, Japan, who got 30%, who said, I'll give the NPP or the president and then the vice a showdown, has come and said, I am sorry and I'm supporting this ticket for it to win because we need to stay in power. How much more you who says you will not vote because somebody has aggrieved you? Someone who felt aggrieved at the highest level has agreed to come and work. Why shouldn't you be doing the same? That perhaps will be the angle from which the, the NPP communicators will take this and want to convince a lot more people because, listen, the, the biggest concern for the NPP this year is not perhaps the NDC, but it's the apathy amongst their own people who say that they have not been pleased with the work done and so they will decide not to vote. Not that they will not vote, they'll vote against mm. the party, mm. but they will decide not to vote because they cannot vote against against the NPP. And so it will be it will be left for, for the communicators to be able to uh, drum home this message. But like Evan said, as whether or not this is just political rhetoric, because in the game of politics, like we've come to understand, there's always an end goal for somebody, no matter what course of action they take. Who is scheming, who is plotting, what at this particular point in time, there could be n- numerous conversations ongoing right now. What happens if it goes this way? Right. Are we able to further our interests after we win Three, the December eight, elections? Nine, or we are better nine, off seven. in opposition where we can begin to stake a claim within the party? Mm. All of these are conversations that persons who, are, who have presidential ambitions, who want to have a significant say in what goes on within the party. These are conversations that they will have internally and within their circles and then decide what best appeals to them and their interests within the Democratic Party. But the work has been cut out. It does appear that it will be a daunting task for the governing New Patriotic Party to be able to rally together its base and we will see the NDC continues to make the case that, look, they've made significant inroads as to how significant these inroads would be. We'll have to see as the campaigning continues up until December 7th. Bill, I'll give you the final word on this. And people on the streets have been worried about a certain uh, scintilla of tribalism that may have sipped into this um, outdooring ceremony. There are concerns that this was held at Mesha. Napo is a royal, and he would not be the only royal to have had this privilege to have been, you know, on the ticket. Nanado himself is a royal, John Mahama a royal, and many others. But we didn't see this kind of flamboyance and to have the overlord of the Ashanti kingdom, for example, literally endorse Napo one to say, I trained him, we paid his fees, he's not arrogant as you think, and then they advised him to be humble. Do you get the sense that there's tribalism that has laced this campaign and which could be dangerous because if other parts of the country also decide to be tribalistic, we may be heading for the hard rock? If you really have learned a lot about the NCP politics, the history of the party, um, how the lives of Bafour Takutu contributed to the making of the ruling new patriotic party from uh, United Party and what a view, then you wouldn't be surprised about what we saw uh, at Menshia yesterday. Napo is not only coming from a traditional um, a, a setup, but he's also coming from a, a traditional mixed with political setup because the MPP also traces its roots to the Menshia Palace. You cannot, if you, are, if you want to talk about politics and Menshia, you cannot alienate MPP from. Menshia's politics. So, yes, 
Napo was a, is, is a royal, but exceptional political royal. Mm. The fact that his father played rule in, in, in the NPP, even though, um, in, in, I mean, in, in the setting up of the NPP, the fact that his grandfather, don't forget his grandfather was Sir Ajmai Prempe II. Right. Sir Ajmai Prempe II contributed to, in fact, he gave money, all right, to Bafwa Kutu. So, okay, all right, when they were setting up the National Liberation Movement, right. he gave money to Bafwa Kutu. Mm. And it was through the National Liberation Movement that NPP also came out. So it is the first time that somebody who is an out-and-out out royal and, of course, also has some political instinct is being, is being risen to that level of, of, I mean, position. So definitely you, you will see something extraordinary. If you listen to the advice of Utun Four, and then you also juxtapose that to the political history of the MPP, I, I, I'm not sure anybody who really understands these dynamics will conclude that, I mean... It was too or overly exceptional. William Evans Inkum is our Northern Bureau Chief. Thank you for joining us. Also, Eric Mawena Agbeta. We had to airlift him to the Ashanti region to do this for us. Eric, thank you as well for joining us this morning and safe trip back home. Sure thing, Jimmy. Great. All right. And um, this is uh, sunrise on 3 FM 92.7, 51 minutes after 8. My name is Johnny Heath. This is your election command center. As always, we want to hear your thoughts and comments. What do you think on the going issues? The perfect pair or John and Jane? Where do you stand? Is it going to be a dynamic duo or double trouble? Well, you tell us what you know. We're live on Facebook at 3FM927. The hashtag is 3FM Sunrise. Always a pleasure to have you on our radio. That's Kennedy Akumprekwe Japan. He's a member of parliament for Asin Central. Well, he won't be returning to parliament. But at least we do know that he has endorsed the Dr. Baumia and uh, Dr. Matthew Puku Prempe campaign. He's not going to give them a showdown, at least. Now we know. Helen. Now you know, don't you know? Now we know the showdown is reserved exclusively for the NDC. Mm. Kennedy Japan says he's throwing his weight firmly behind the Baumia Napo tickets. Very okay. interesting times indeed. Right. I 
The best in the morning is on 92.7, sunrise on 3FM. Helen, so there you have it. It's a done deal, is it not? Uh, Dr. Baumia ba- ba- and uh, Dr. Matthew Puku Prempe. Right there. Dr. Digital, Dr. he called Digital, him. I don't know if I've heard one, that one before. It's a well, new entrance. Well, no, but he's been called that oh, name I see. many, many times. Um, I wonder why it's not Dr. Economy, you know, because he's supposed to be the brain behind all the economic, uh, mm. you know, adventure that we have. Uh, gotten into, uh, shall I say, expedition, a journey with a purpose. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. 
a journey, yeah? Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm keen for all of this uh, to die down very swiftly because mm. we have a lot of pressing issues as a nation that we have to contend with. Okay. It's 9 o'clock here on Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. We'll take a quick break. We'll return from these messages. Malik Basintali, Deputy National Communications Officer of the NDC. What is his interest in all of this? Because according to Nana Dodanko Kufadu, according to Dr. Baumi, and according to Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, none of them stand tall. In fact, Honorable Kennedy of Japan said the alternative is not the best. As has been said many, many times, the alternative is dangerous. What is a dangerous person doing in our studio? We'll find out on return from this break. Stay with us here on Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. Your health is worth protecting. Do you know only one pharmacy can be within a 400-meter radius? Well, if you...